Sonny, you know, he, he racked up 674 losses yeah. at Ryder. I mean, yeah. that, that's shit in the bed there. You know, any thoughts on why he lost so many games? Yeah, I mean, I, we seem to have the players. And so if you get the players and you lose all those games, I, you know, I guess it kind of comes down to the manager. And uh, I always wondered about it, but you know, what are you going to do? I mean, he had the collective bargaining protection, and so we, we couldn't do anything about it. We just had to kind of live with it. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you weren't keeping around for his personality. I well, mean, he was I, a teddy bear, but still, you know, you want to win. Well, I think Sonny would be the first one to admit that the reason why he had all these losses is because of his players. I mean, guys like Kevin Barry and Jim Hoey and uh, Ed Whited. I mean, these guys barely made it to the major leagues. So how, how are you supposed to win with guys like that? Well, it's his assistants. I mean, that would be the, the biggest thing. Well, first of all, he was coached for, what, 800 years. So you can't win every game, so you're going to lose a lot. That's A. Or I remember one day we were sitting at Drexel, and he called the nine starters over and said, pick a number out of a hat. And we just randomly drew numbers out of the hat, and whatever number you had, that's where you batted in the lineup. I don't think that strategy really paid off and helped in the win and loss column. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what the lineup's going to look like today. <laughs> Where's it going to change? Because you knew it was going to change. It was never the same. It always like there was like a few guys that were always the same, but then there was everyone else that was like, who knows? If if you went 0 for 0 for four with two strikeouts. Mm -hmm. You're either not playing or you're betting on. Yeah, you're down. You're down. You're down. Forget it. You're One good. game. You're Good terrible. Night. I'd imagine screaming at players probably contributed to some of those losses. You'd be in the batter's box, you swing at a breaking ball in the dirt, it's now one and two, you step out to compose yourself, and then you just hear, hey Mark, he just made you look like a fool on a breaking ball, right? You think he might throw another one? Well, I know the pitcher just heard that, so now I'm in between, I don't want to piss you off and get fooled again, so, you know, you know, the little things can add up to wins, and the little things can add up to a lot of losses, too. You know, my favorite part of meal money was just having to go into his office after a game and getting your meal money. Because, uh, of course, all you want to do is go in there, get your $10, and get the hell out of there. But, you know, of course, you walk in there, and he's buck naked. Uh, and that's the moment in time he's got to tell you all the things you did wrong that day, right? Hey, when you're up at bat, right, you got to stay balanced, right? Instead of putting all your weight out on your front leg... And, you know, of course, all you can see is all this going on, 65-year-old naked man. Um, you know, so you retain about 0% of what he's telling you at that moment. But uh, it was good tips. He went slogging out to the mound, you know, to make yet another pitching change. And I turned to Kurt and said, you know, this guy reminds me of Casey Stengel late in his career when he was with the Mets. And they were pretty bad. His name head coach tomorrow, same guy. How, do you, how long do you think he'd last? Uh, maybe a year. <laughs> He might make it through fall practice. I don't know. 2015, Sonny was coaching. He'd last a month.